All right, guys, welcome to class. Hello. Hello. All right, someone can hear me. All right, welcome back to class after the long, really, really long. After the after the break. Yeah. All right. I hope we are ready for Guinness now. Inshallah. Inshallah. All right. So let me share screen. All right. All right, so we have our box, our Oracle virtual box, ready to set up virtual machines so we can run Linux on them. All right, so let's go. All right, so you remember this? So we just set up a, our first virtual machine. And to do that, if you remember, you go to machine, you do new. Uh, let's call this one Linux one. And then we are loading Linux operating system and we're loading a Red Hat, Red Hat 64, always 64. All right, next. It will assume one gig of RAM for itself. Yeah, that's fine. So we'll leave it at that. And then it will assume instead of 50 gig of hard disk space, only eight gig of hard disk space for itself. Okay, that's fine. And then we have created our first Linux machine. Awesome. So let's quickly start it so that we can load Linux into it. All right, so to load Linux, we're already, okay. So let's go here and see if I have a, Linux already downloaded. Yes, I should have that downloaded in uh, maybe downloads. I have Ubuntu. Uh, yes, you can actually load Ubuntu. Well, let me not confuse you. Let's just load the normal send OS that would normally use. Uh, I don't find it here. Let me look around. Uh, 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 uh. Let me look here. Uh, lecture video, no, not video. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. Lecture notes. Uh, let's see what's in. okay. Uh, Windows, Python, Linux, Ubuntu. Yeah, what is the operating system? I saved the operating system, so. Oh, OS is okay, right here. All right, so here I have all the operating systems I downloaded. I have Ubuntu, which we'll use later, but for now, let's use SendOS. So I take SendOS and I say, choose that one, and I say, start. All right, so I'm now loading SendOS into my virtual machine. Okay. I'm loading St. Louis into virtual machine. Yeah. We can run two machines concurrently. If you want. Let us run another one. Because we need to do networking at some point. So we need two machines. Okay, by the time being, if you can still see what I'm doing. So I'm, I'll be doing English. English, English, so I just say continue. Yes. Continue. All right here, I need to be careful. Uh, date is good, language is good. Installs, installation source. Uh, yeah, that is good. From local media, software installation. Let me change that from minimal to 
Sava would go. Sava would go. Okay, and say dawn. All right. All right, so that is set. Then uh, what is this has exclamation mark. So let me find out what's going on there. Uh, install here on this hard disk. That's storage. Okay, so that is done. All right, so everything is clear. No alarm, everything is good. Uh, server with GUI and everything else is good. All right, so let's say begin installation. To begin installation, I need to the the administrator account is already there by default. In Linux, the administrator account is called root account. All right, so let me assign a password so I'm able to log in and use Linux password. I'll assign the password. Then confirm that password. All right, then I'll say DAW. All right, if I want, I can create just one user, maybe. Uh, I'm actually compelled. So let me create a user A account. And then create a password for that user. All right, so I say DAW. So Linux is loading now. All right. I did not create the root account. I just entered the password while created the first user account on that system. All right, so this is how to load Linux operating system. Now, Linux is open source operating system with different versions, with uh, different dialects of Linux. These different versions, these different uh, alterations, these different dialects, like I call them, technically are called distros, distribution, different distributions of Linux. So the common distros would be Linux, Red Hat, Linux CentOS, Linux Fedora, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Kali. Suzy, Amazon, there are just hundreds of them, but we don't know them all. Depends on uh, what's okay for you. You use it as in fact, uh, the purpose that you desire to use Linux for. But the popular ones are the ones that I just mentioned, right? Especially Ubuntu. Ubuntu tend to be popular. I mean, when we're looking for jobs and they, they're asking you, they require that you know Linux. Yes, they may mention Red Hat. Red Hat is, is actually the very popular, maybe the most popular, but Ubuntu is really gaining ground because everywhere they mention Red Hat, they want to say, you should also know how to use Ubuntu. But uh, the good thing is there is really no difference in terms of operations. The, the commands that you use to run the operations are almost exactly the same, except in one or two areas where there is change in the way you use the commands, you have almost more than 90% the same commands. So what I'm saying is, once you know one version, one distro of units, yes, it's as good as you know the rest because uh, the things you know, you need to know about the other one to be able to say you know it there, it's not more than one or two commands. So, you know, so for that reason, we work mostly with uh, ZOS, but uh, at some project level, we just want to try Ubuntu to say, okay, how does another distro of Linux work? And then we use this uh, Ubuntu because it's uh, becoming popular for industry use for Christians. And then at the end of the day, you'll be able to put in, put in your resume that you can use Linux operating systems. And then if you want to be specific, you cannot mention Red Hat, ZendOS, Fedora, and Ubuntu. All right, so right now we are loading the, like you can see, the ZendOS version of, and the ZendOS distro of Linux. 
it's a lowest distribution of this. All right, so that one is loading. And once we are done loading that, we'll load another one. Because like I said, we we'll need to set up a network at some point, so we we'll need multiple systems. And then setting up the other one will just confirm that you now know how to set up a virtual machine and load Linux operating system into it. And then we'll be done with that phase. And then we'll move on to begin to learn the commands. Start with basic commands, and then we'll move on to intermediate and then to advanced commands. So the idea is uh, for someone who may not be going all the way to cloud, what you will learn in Linux is will be enough for you to go and take up the role as Linux system administrator. So for that reason, uh, yeah, you might not be able to learn everything 100%. In fact, I don't think anyone can. Because the more you work in operations and the more you meet challenges, the more you meet, you look for commands and uh, services to implement the challenges that come your way, the better you are at this. So even though you will not claim that you're an expert just because you have done one month thorough training, yes, the knowledge should be enough if you practice well to claim some two years, three years expertise, three years of experience, the use of Linux and Linux related services. So for that reason, we're going to be kind of thorough. We're going to go beyond just the basics. We're going to learn intermediate and even I dare to say advanced because some of the things I'll be teaching you here, I learned from the advanced Linux course, not just the ordinary course. Okay. And then I'm using the curriculum Red Hat Certified Linux Administrator. That certification, that's what we are using to learn. In other words, if you understand what we are doing and you practice, not just to watch me like you are watching a movie, you actually practice like we are doing it, like we are doing together, you practice on your own, then you should pass. Of course, you need to practice dumps. Don't just go straight to exam without practicing past questions, similar exam questions. They are called dumps. You should pass the Red Hat Certified Linux Administrator exam. Before cloud came to being and before cloud took over the IT scenario, that certification was a big one. It was a big deal to have that certification. It's not for children. It's not it's mature certification. It's not equivalent of Linux Plus. It's a big certification, All right? However, with cloud now reigning supreme in uh, IT certifications, if you are going all the way to cloud and not stopping at Linux, then I would advise that you just focus on the main certification, which is AWS Solutions Architect. However, if you are not coming all the way there for some reason, then if you are stopping at Linux, then you may want to try the Red Hat certified Linux uh, uh, system administrator examination. All right. And then, of course, if you feel that that is too hard for you, then, of course, you have the option of picking the cheap one, the one everybody, anybody can pass, even without formal training. I'll be Linux Plus. Anything plus, like we said at the beginning, they are cheap certifications, entry level certification. Well, uh, it's not really that bad. If you have an entry level certification and you have practice on top of that, it's okay. It's okay. Just have that. That's the easiest form for you to pass. And then you can now support the certification. The certification by itself will not give you a job. All right. It's just to tell somebody, okay, I'm coming from a uh, accounting background, I'm coming from this admin background, I'm coming from non-IT background, <clears throat> but I've made efforts to transit to IT and this is the result of my effort. That's just what it says. Beyond the certification, you still need to be able to say, I did it, I did it, I did it. I completed this project and that project added this kind of value to the company for 
that uh, I deployed the project for. There was this issue, there was this issue. I did this, I did this, and I resolved those issues. Those are the things that employers are interested in. What you did, you did not. All right, so this is ready. We say rebuild. And then uh, don't show me this anymore. I'm okay. That's the caption. And then restart the system. And then with that restart, we should be okay with Linux. Linux should be good to go. All right, any question? Okay, no question. So let us repeat this whole process of uh, loading Linux. Uh, before we do that, let's go to say license and then we'll say accept. Then, okay. Network and host name, don't worry about it. We'll do this as part of the training. So we'll just click on this. And then we'll say finish configuration. And then I can now log in as that user that I created at the beginning. And this is Linux. All right. Uh, complete configuration, just next, next. Uh, skip this, start using SendOS. All right, we don't need this window. And this is Linux. All right. Well, we said Linux is going to be command line interface. How can we have graphics here and we're still using mouse? Where? It's all because we are still babies in Linux, so we are allowed this uh, this privilege. Ideally, we should go to System Tools and then go to Terminals, and this is where we should work from. Welcome to Linux. All right, before we start to come back here to start to use Linux, let's quickly repeat. Uh, let's quickly install one more one more machine. Create and install Linux on one more All right, so if you joined late and you miss any part of the first one, watch closely now. As we go to machine and we say new, and then we say Linux server two or something, and we just do Linux two. And then we say, yes, we are loading Linux operating system. Because the three popular operating systems are Windows, Linux, and the OS. Windows, Linux, and the OS, that's Mac, yeah? The Solaris is actually, the other operating systems are Unix-based operating systems. In other words, they are from the same source as Linux, even though they are called different names. Sun Solaris, IBM OS, they are Unix-based operating systems, just like Linux. The Unix is the earlier version of Linux, or rather the father of Linux, the original operating system from which Linux was derived. It's called Unix. So that's why in some job description, you see that they require you to know Unix stroke Linux. Uh, these days is essentially the same thing. However, uh, companies like IBM and uh, Sun Solaris and even Cisco and uh, all the big companies, they have their own version, their own variant of Linux or better still of Unix. So they call them different names. But like I said, they are all like uh, variants from the original Unix and they are all like Linuxes owned by different proprietors. All right. Or somebody like uh, people, okay, uh, just in the class. So for people who are familiar with router configuration, you'll see that everything we are doing with Linux is just the same thing you are doing on router. Anyway, but in this case, we are doing a Linux, so we'll take Linux. And then what version of Linux? We have Linux, 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 Arc Linux, Debian, Fedora, uh, then two, Mandiva, Oracle Linux, Red Hat, uh, Trouble Linux, Ubuntu, Sandros, and so many, so many others. They cannot all be listed here. 
but the particular one we're interested in would be Red Hat because CentOS is actually Red Hat. It's just uh, CentOS is Red Hat. So we take Red Hat and then we say next. You see that uh, you notice that Linux does not need so much RAM to work. Out of your 64 meg RAM or 32 or 16, it just requires one gig. One gig is what it requires. Okay, if that's what you are taking for yourself, then who am I to change this? They will just say next. But you feel like you can increase if you want, but that will do. So if that will do, I don't have any reason, a good reason to increase. And where Windows will take 50 gig of my hard disk for itself to, for uploading of its, uh, of its files, Linux is taking only eight gig. And say, ah, this is enough for me. I'll use eight gig to upload on my. So Linux is more rugged, it's lighter. It's much, much lighter like you can see. Look at this space that is going. All right, and then you have created the machine. Now that you have created the machine, remember the next thing you want to do? You want to put an operating system in the machine. To do that, you say start. And then having already downloaded your operating system, you look for where you downloaded to. Right now, this is my operating system. It's already showing because I loaded it just now. I already downloaded that. You know how to download the operating system. So this time, instead of downloading Windows 20, 16 server or Windows 10 Enterprise, you Google send OS 7 and then you download it. Of course, I'll show you the note and you see the steps with the button. Having just finished Windows and having downloaded and loaded into virtual machine by yourself Windows, this should be simple for me. All right, so it's already showing there. If it wasn't showing, I will click to look for it and then I'll just say start. All right. So I'll say install. Install Sandwich 7. Uh, there are different versions. 7 is good enough. We have 8. Okay, I'm preparing to launch 9. Maybe by the time they launch 9, then we can move to it. Uh, for now, version 7 is good enough for our practice. And then I'm looking at in future moving completely away from CentOS to Ubuntu. I'll just focus my training on Ubuntu. But for now, I'll just introduce you to Ubuntu. So in future, I'm looking at training or I'm looking at teaching Ubuntu. All right. So we'll just answer these basic questions like you already know. Continue. Uh, all right, let me close this. I can see American, New York Times is okay. English is okay, English here, yeah. local media. Minimal selection. If you do this, then you don't have access to the graphic user interface and then some services. Look at the possible services you can install, all right? So you want to say server with GUI, another server with GUI, look at the possible services you can install on Linux. If you do minimal install, then what are you going to install? Look at the limit. The limitations that you place yourself in. You are not able to ins install later on as many services as you want to. All right? That the possible things you can do. Much more than this, but just an overview of what you can do because you are saying, okay, uh, there are other uh, capacity that you can install in this, but this one is okay. Install our server with GUI. All right? So, all right, checking, 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 checking. Checks. And then I come here and I make sure that also is uh, clear. Okay, everything is clear. There's no exclamation mark, no caution anyway. So I say begin installation. Like we did before, the root account already exists. So I assign a password to it. Then we say, okay. And then I say, create a user account and give it password.
All right, so now we have assigned the password to the root account and we've created a user account here. So all we do now is wait for the loading and configuration of Linux system. All right, any question? Oh, uh, Mr. Okay. Yes. So, uh, did you in any way uh, download another new Oracle VM or is it the same one we used for Windows is that what you're using now? Yes, the same one we use for Windows. I just deleted the virtual machines. I did not upload a new one. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah. But well, if you do not trust the one you had earlier on, if you was giving you any kind of error, this will be a good opportunity to delete it and re re reinstall it. Uh, okay, I was I was even thinking if I can like um download the or uh, the uh, the virtual machine on my Apple because I did the Windows on my uh my Microsoft. So I was thinking if I can do this Linux on the on my Apple. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think if it's gonna work better or? Uh, better, I don't know, but sure it will, it will work. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I don't know if the experience will be smoother than uh, what you had with it. Uh, because once your mm. Oracle Vafra box is on the it's an operating system, it does mm -hmm. not know the operating system. Rather, it's, uh, it knows the resources on the, on the host. So if, okay. even if it works better on this system, it will not be because Apple is better than Windows. It will be because the resources, your RAM, your hard disk, and your processor of mm -hmm. this laptop that runs Apple are uh, mm -hmm. better, just to shorten the story, than okay. the resources you have on the other one. Okay. Why? All right, questions. Yeah, Mr. King. Yes. Um is there like um probably I don't know if this is too forward, but pardon me. Like active directory, all those things in Linux too. And then Mac. Um, uh, Linux operating system, no. Linux operating system has no Active Directory. However, only... Active Directory, I mean, services that will do the job active, of Active Directory can be integrated if you need to on Linux operating system. Okay. I don't know if you got that. So it does yes, not come I'm... as default. It's not part of Linux. But if you feel, ah, Active Directory, I'm missing it. Wow, look at the work it did for me. Centralizing all my activities and making login possible from one point. I want that on Linux. Yes, you can do that. And that service on Linux is called, uh, ah, yes, it's a service. I'll remember it now. On Linux that can do Active Directory for years. For, you said for OS, for Mac? For Mac, to be honest, I'm not sure. I, I'm sure they have the equivalent of Active Directory, but I'm not sure how that works. Okay. Thank you. I've always, I've always used the Windows, Windows, Windows. Yeah, I love Mac. I love to be in that class, but the people I train, the kind of circle, I don't be punishing myself for running two systems, Mac for myself, and then OS for my students and so I just focused on the rest. All right. Uh, any more questions? Okay, while we're waiting for this, let's look at the notes and see if we skipped any major thing we should So, 
let's see notes on uh, Linux. All right, so let's maximize this. Why that one is loading the background? All right, so mouse. Sometimes you you run into problems like this. Your mouse is not captured, so you need to switch off the system. If your mouse is hanging within your OS, within your Linux machine, virtual machine, uh, Linux machine, uh, running your virtual environment, you, you switch the machine off. You go to machines, go to settings, go to systems, and then take motherboard under the pointer device. In fact, let's just do it. So this is what I mean. If you run into mouse not working, then, oh, there's no one in cold state. Let me quickly switch this one off so I can use it too. Or I can go to machines, settings, uh, system. You look at this place, pointing device, one, two. Okay, that will be active. Okay, let me do it. I said code state, so this one needs to be off. How do you switch this off? How do you switch it off? Where's the machine? This Linux two, where's Linux one? Uh, now, look at me. This The mouse is within the Linux operating system, right? But I can't get the mouse out to click somewhere else outside. And you see the mouse hovering, but not able to get out. To get it out so I can use it elsewhere, in the Windows environment, this is what I'll do. I'll press the right, there are two controls on your keyboard, the right control, the control key on the right hand side of the keyboard. So I press, bam. So now I have my mouse working outside of that environment. So with that mouse working outside, I can come here and I say Linux one, and I can say file, close, shut down the system, and then that. So it's in code state now. But if I come back here now, it will not work inside here. It's still working as Windows. But if I click inside, the mouse is now captured within the Linux OS. So how do I get back? You can't see my hand now, so you don't see me moving, showing you anything else unless I use the mouse. Again, to get the mouse to, to work outside, I'll click the right control key and now look at the mouse. I can now move it around everywhere. So remember your right control key. So that one, I can see if you have problem with your mouse, you go here, machine, and then you go to settings, you go to system, and then you come here to PC2. And then what does the note say? Where's the notes? Where's the word? Ah. It's already open. So why is it open? And then it says, uh, PC2 is checked. Now check SUB tablet and click OK. All right, so it says once that one is checked, uh, where's the place now? Let me minimize. Where's my environment? Here. Too many things open. OK, here. So it says PS2 mouse is checked. Now click that and click USB and then say OK. And, but right now I don't have any problem, so I don't want to change to USB. But if you do have problem, all right, please remember that it's already there. Just, uh, it's not a very common problem. We already provided the solution before you even run into the problem. All right, so let's go back to the notes. Let's go back to the notes. Where's the notes? Microsoft Word, yeah. All right. Mouse hanging issue is now resolved by the following actions, right? Yeah. And that action. All right, let's go down. Uh, to download any operating system, any of the Linux variants, look for download and install. Virtualization with Oracle VirtualBox. If it's Ubuntu, Download Ubuntu, SendOS, Red Hat, Fedora, they are all variants of Red Hat. SendOS is basically Red Hat, but they don't have an office and therefore cannot support you. If you run into problem, you will not be able to call somebody to say, oh, you're not paying anybody anything. 
But with Red Hat, you might be paying a subscription fee, $50, $100 per month, so that if you have a problem, because you are subscribed to somebody, to a company, you can say, oh, okay, this is what you are doing wrong. Or they can back off for you or do something wrong. All right? So once you know SendOS, it's exactly no difference between SendOS and Red Hat, you the same. And they are both de uh, derived from Fedora. All right? Okay, so somebody was asking me, did I install a brand new server? Remove all old VMs. This is what I did. So remove all old virtual machines. They are locking up system resources, leaving inadequate resources for the new virtual machine. Clean up the virtual space by deleting appropriate files. Okay, and then you can download your Linux uh, server. And then you do exactly what we did for Windows. And then to delete your Linux, if you don't want to go go, go, go and uh, start all over again to look for where Linux is, you can use this URL. So once you enter this URL, you are going to see this. And then you take this one that has, uh, I mean, this is one I used. But you can experiment with others. I click this one, this, this one that I highlighted. All right, so that's how I downloaded that one. Okay, let me take this, Control C and then put it on the, let me put it on the browser for you. Uh, okay, this is not the time to do this. Let me just manage it with that. Ah, it's gonna be hard, so. It's not All right, so I load my browser and I put that URL here. Control V, and this is what I mean. Look at the one that has everything. So I click this and look, it's already downloaded. My ISO is already down. My, so that's how I downloaded my Linux. So downloading already, that is. All right. So where's my... I want to... So let's see. So that one is downloading and so on and so forth. So you have you will have this note. Network adapter. All right. So that's all I want to show you for now. Let's go back to Linux. So I have this one running. Where is it? Uh, Okay, so it's waiting for me to enter password. No, it's already done. It's just waiting for me to reboot. Let me reboot. All right, any question at this time? Do you now know what to do to download your Linux operating system? Or more specifically, your CentOS version 7? And then you know how to clear your current virtual machines running in different, because maybe you want to conserve your resources to, to run a Linux operating system at this time. I will not have enough resources to be running Windows as well as Linux, so I have to delete those things. All right, so I, I sit down. And like I said, we're not doing this at this time. We'll do it the hard way by ourselves. So we do. All right, so we'll say finish configuration. And then I log in as ARK. I enter the password that uh, I had at the beginning. And then I use my arrow key to see if I can rearrange everything's pattern. Yeah. Uh, which one is this one? Let me see. Where's the other operating system? Okay, so here. Hmm. English, yes. Next. 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 Skip. 
Okay, I'm ready to start using Cellulas. And that is it. I don't need this window, so that's it. And then I go to, yeah. So this is it, this is GUI. You know, we said install server with GUI. This is the GUI part of the server. Graphic user interface. All right, so I use my arrow key, uh, my control key, come here. I should have two operating systems now. Oh, one is powered off, okay. So I click that one and I say start. So I have two machines. So let me load them side by side. Not that I need them right now, but I'll need them like that later. So this is yes, Linux 2 and this is Linux 1. All right, so that's it, we are downloading. Ah, uh, you know when we load, when we loaded Windows, we had a what I call the drivers, Windows installation disk. Let's try it here. Sometimes, let's just try it. Let's just try. It. So we insert the CD, uh, insert guest CD, then watch out. It has appeared because we inserted it. Look at it. It has appeared. Now. All right, so what do you do? You double click the CD. And then what does it say? <clears throat> uh, contains software intended to be run automatically. Uh, we have all of this. We have a Windows add-on. Uh, Linux add-on, yeah, that's our interest. It's Linux. We're not doing Solaris, we're not doing OS, we're doing Linux. So this is what we do. All right. And then it should run. It's loading virtual boss Linux additions from. Yeah. And then let it just load. I know that it fails sometimes. And it, but it's loading now. Just like we did for Windows, Windows addition. All right, so to come back, my mouse will not live here. What do I do to make my mouse live here so I can come to this other side of my process? Of my control, okay, right control. So I press my right control and now I have my mouse here. So I log in here. All right, so I need to do what I did there. So I go to device and I say insert guest CD. All right, so it's inserted now. All right, it's going just like using Windows. So I know how to use Windows. Just double click that one and it opens the content and you say, oh, this is what I want. I want to run this one. You say you run. Okay, open with other application. Just double click for Okay, let's try another method. Here. We, we do wrong here. Uh, let's try this. I know we double click the first time, but let's try. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what difference. So this one is running in the, the right, my right hand one is running on Windows environment. This other one is doing the same running, but running the same files in Linux environment. Okay, let's compare and see how they, let's return to close this window. That's why they failed because uh, you run in Windows. All right, so that did not work. So next time, just double click here, right here, and then it will load the window. Double click. Right. So it's now loading the familiar way, the Windows environment. It's loading. It's going to take a while, but it will load the drivers and uh, just fix the two, the two interfaces here and there because, like you saw, it's an uh, add on. You need it to complete your Linux installations and all. All right. Any questions?
questions? Okay, no questions. Okay, so control. Let's go here. Let's do here. Let's understand a bit of minutes. So when we have a, we'll have it like this, and then we have our machines inside here. Machine one, machine two, machine three, machine four, machine 17, machine 35, machine 60. So uh, and then we have uh, this other machine here. Okay, at uh, the gateway, as the gateway. So the one of these machines for this corporate network would be uh, a server that has been promoted do, to domain controller. So inside this domain controller, you have your Active Directory or your AAA. Of course, you know the importance of domain controller. We spent one month doing that. And then if anything needs to leave this network to another network, if it's communicating internally, there's no problem at all. Your, there's no problem, but anytime uh, data is meant for another network and it has to go out of this network and it gets to the switch, the switch would uh, the switch will route the data to this gateway, and then the gateway will let it go outside, usually through the internet, and then to the other network that it is going to. All right. So when you have networks now around the internet working together the way I just described for one. You no longer have just one, each of these is a, could be a corporate network or individual devices in the form of mobile phone, laptop, uh, computers, just everywhere scattered around the world, but all connected through. Uh, the real science for connection to the internet is like that, right? All connected through the internet. So this is the kind of situation, the kind of, uh, environment, the kind of scenario that you call enterprise network. Enterprise network. So for this kind of enterprise network, your windows will no longer do to manage. Yeah, your windows will be okay to manage your corporate network here. But once it's going out and then there are so many other networks involved, there is security to be done here. There is security at every point here. There is need to determine who gets your, your service, who does not get it. The Windows no longer has the ruggedability, the capacity, the flexibility, the lightweight to perform all of that. So in place of that, you want to take off. Yeah, some of them might still run Windows. Some services here, maybe this one is, has its own server inside. This one, has its own. this one may even have its own server. Let's even leave that one. You may want to have another dedicated system that is, whereas this one is taking care of the internal network here, this system now, uh, let's give it a different color, will be dedicated to the management of all of these other okay. services. So this system will run a Linux operating system. And then this other. I don't mean, please mute yourself. I don't see my mute. All right, so this is the Linux operating system running on this server, and this server is now in charge of managing all of these external services, whereas this server is in charge of managing only the corporate network. So this is the place of enterprise network and the Linux here now. So managing what this guy should have access to through the internet on this server. For example, maybe your web server, the intranet that the people of your, the intranet that your corporate network has access to might be hosted here using IIS. But the internet, the web server, the web application, the Uber, the Google, the Gropper, the favor that 
the whole world want to access by connecting to your network is resident in this server. And therefore, who has access, what can they do, what do they have access to, all of that is regulated here. And then they are all connected to, they can all connect to it through the internet. So this is your Linux operating system. And the concept of everybody having access to it over the internet is what we call enterprise, compared to this one, where only people within this local area network have access. That one is corporate. So this is the concept of corporate. Yeah, you already knew copy of uh, enterprise and where Linux is used now. I think we've explained this many times in the past, but does it make any sense explaining it again this time? We are missing a uh, chairman is not here. Where's I'm sure she will still join us. Yeah. Um, yes, your question. Well, based on what you said last the last sentence that okay, Google, Uber, Grubhub, they want to connect. Yeah. Um, does that mean they don't use um Windows for <laughs> my ear is definitely There was so much uh, distortion from you. Does that, does that mean they don't use what? Does that mean they don't use Windows? Is that the question? Windows operating system. Oh, please, somebody who heard him can uh, interpret so that the distortion will not let me hear the last part. Sorry, I'm outside as well. I'm sorry, I just came outside. I said, does that mean they don't use Windows operating system anymore? Those big, big up that you just mentioned. Uh, but look at here now. Look at the system here. What was this one running? Can you see my pen? What is this system running? I already have Windows operating system here. Now. Please, who can help explain? Who understands the question enough to contribute? They're no longer completely new to IT, so somebody can. Who can explain it from a different perspective that will help us understand? So the fact that they are running, uh, they have an enterprise network and running a Linux operating system. The question is, does that mean that Windows is fixed out? They don't use Windows and Windows Server and anything related to Windows anymore? I think he said um, that using Windows is for just within the corporate organization, that anything going outside that, Windows might not be able to manage that to use Linux, if I understood Exactly. That. Exactly. So they use Windows, and Windows has its place in the network. If it's uh, corporate related, like you just said, yes, they still use Windows there. But like she said, if it's to do with at the enterprise level where they have to connect all of these millions of people across the world, then Windows does not have, I mean, why would you leave Linux to go and use Windows? Anyway, you don't know Linux yet, you are just coming to Linux. By the time you are done with Linux, you will see that you cannot have Linux and be managing Windows. So we do is right. Windows has its place. It doesn't mean that Windows is useless. And like you can see in the diagram, that is the place of Windows taking care of the a small part of the network that is governed and managed within there as a corporate site. So they go to the office to do their work. That's likely to be a corporate environment where Windows will run their own small network for the HR, for the marketing, for all the other people. But when it comes to the real operating system they are using to pump to make their Uber visible to the world. It is housed in a Linux operating system, not Windows operating system. Even the staff may not know that the company they are working for run Linux. So they just come, they do their own bits of the big work of the company. Salespeople who use the sales uh, application hosted cloud, the different people will just use different applications. But well, as far as the real application that they are supporting is concerned, it is hosted on 
happiness and is available to the millions of customers via a Linux server. The reason to be so obvious by the time we begin to do it. And that's what we're about to learn. How, what services, what commands, what, how would they make that possible? Those are the things we'll be learning. All right, so thank you for that contribution. Windows is still relevant, but it has its own place. Any other question? Okay, so let's go now. At this stage, we should begin to, let's go and start to learn to use it. So let's go back to share screen this. All right, so we are here now. So when, when you come here and your Windows is, uh, your Linux is gone, just press your, make sure your mouse, grab your mouse, make sure it's on the right window. Once you click, the only way to get into your Linux here is to press space bar, space bar, space bar. Some people did not ask me in class, they will go ahead to shut down the system and start all over again just to get here. No, your space bar will take you here. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so again, my mouse is not coming this way. Oh, I'm still loading this. Yeah, I know it always fades at some point, but it's okay. So let me quickly go to the other side, control, and then press A. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I thought I pressed. Okay. So, uh, there was a problem opening this particular file. This, the file you opened has some what? Invalidate character. Yeah, if it's a bad file, no problem. Okay. Last time I said edit anyway. So this time, let me do something different. Uh, let me see, retry. Of course, it's going to come backwards. Additional fonts required. If it's a bad font, don't worry. Just Text editor is requesting additional fonts. I don't, don't worry about fonts. Mm, so, still working. Okay, why that one is working? Let me come here. So, what's the situation here? Okay, so uh, this one looks like it's done. So, I just close that window. If you don't save changes from the last two minutes, will be permanently lost. No, I don't want to save. Close without saving. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just supposed to install uh, any additions that you feel Linux might need along the way, and that's it. All right. So yes, I'm used to these errors coming up at the end. Well, it's free software, so we don't expect it to be hundred percent perfect. But well, in any case, I think it has installed, or rather I believe it has installed the additions for units that we need, even though there was something it tried to do at the end that uh, did not work out. All right, so at this stage, what do we do? We're done. So let's begin to use Linux. Uh, but before we begin to use Linux, uh, let me just hold on here and see if I can show you something. Yes, it's even good that we have two systems. I didn't know I could use it this way. I'll just use it to demonstrate something to you. What's taking so long? I don't think that's normal for it to take. Okay, so let me try. Yeah, that one is working. Okay, it's responding. So why is it now? Okay, so I have to terminate whatever is taking this long to do. Uh, system terminal.
Yeah, Tamina is here, but let me see Frank closes. Mm. Uh, close that. Okay. Okay. I don't want to see this. Elito is not responding. Pause quit. Yes. My resources are released. Okay. So this is what I want to show you now. Let me control. Let me go to applications and go to system tools and go to terminal. So this is the real in this terminal. We're not expected to be able to use, I mean, we're not expected to, to run between graphic user interface and the command line interface. This is the command line interface. Print working directory, ls minus l. These are the things we'll be learning. Now, let me show you something. I come here and I go home. Look at it, home. I open. I double click. Inside home folder, I have the directory called desktop. I have the directory called document, downloads, music. But here, how are you going to get to home folder? How are you going to get here? To open the desktop, what do I do? Or let me open public, for example. What do I do? I double click. What is inside public? Nothing. There is nothing inside it. To get out of public, what do I do? I many ways I can go one step back or something. I open document, what's inside? Nothing. Do you see how easy it is to get into a folder, open it and see that there is nothing inside, get out one step, open another one, see that there is nothing inside, get out one step. If I get out two steps, two steps, that's the last one. And then I can open document, can open if I want to use, you see, it's so beautiful. Just navigating around graphic user environment using mouse and clicking and double click. Now, let us do the same thing here. Let us do the same thing here, on this other side. So how do we do it? Where is something to click here? I can't use mouse. There's no graphics to click, that is the problem. So how do we do that same thing here without mouse? This is how to do it. To find out where we are, the command is print working directory. I see that I'm in home, I'm in a directory called home, and inside that directory, I'm in a Akin. In Windows, that thing that you call folder, like you can see it right in front of you, is called directory in CLI, right? So if I want to take a look, what do I have inside a Akin, which is the home folder of the user Akin located in home. The command is ls list. And then it will list. I have a directory called desktop. I have another directory called document. This is exactly the same directories that I have on my left hand side with room. Or if you feel that ah, it's not really showing well, you can't be counting. You can do ls. And then you use the option minus L, then to now list it vertically. You leave the content vertically. So we started using the NOS command. So the command LS minus L is the equivalent of displaying the content of your directly, like we are seeing here. Right? And somebody confirmed that they are understanding what we are doing. Okay. Um, One, Mr. Okay. Yeah. So those uh, directories here, uh, you cannot like it cannot be seen in the desktop, like uh, the desktop of the of Linux. This is Linux, so we are still in Linux. This is not Windows. This yeah, is the yeah. GUI mm -hmm. arm of Linux. This is the CLI of Linux. So we are, the, the equivalent CLI is the one on, on my right-hand side of the one on the left. So what's your question? So my question is, uh, so is it that Linux doesn't have any um, 
what would I call it now? Uh, something like a desktop. It doesn't have something called desktop. Yeah, I don't know what you mean by desktop. Because there's a folder here called desktop. Are you yeah. referring to the name of it? Okay. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Uh, I guess what okay. um, what I thought you meant mm -hmm. was does it mean that user uh, Linux or not this graphic user interface so that we can use it exactly the way we are using Windows? So that was why I said that's exactly what we are displaying here. But you are not being paid seventy thousand, seventy five thousand, and ninety thousand just to repeat what you are doing in Windows. You are being paid all that money to know how to do this same thing, not from Windows but from CLI like this and then as we progress you now know oh, okay this is the reason cli is more powerful than GUI. okay now i understand but for now we want to be able to do everything we have been doing in GUI from cli yeah, okay. yeah from the command line interface so all the idea of you look for a desktop you look for a um, or folder, you double click it, you drag and drop file. No, 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 no. Those ones, that is not what they want you to do with Linux. You are doing that with Linux. Then why did you come all the way from? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was just the example I had in mind is you came from, you moved from one country to another to look for better opportunities. So explore the opportunities in that country instead of sticking with the old-fashioned method of doing things. That kind of thing. So Windows has flexible, better, more efficient, more effective, powerful ways of doing things better than Windows. And you cannot continue to use Windows style and hope that you get those stuff done better in Linux. So essentially what we want to do in Linux is first of all, the things we already know to do in Windows, we want to know how Linux does them. And that is where you will use commands to say, clear the screen, then we'll start all over. And then we say, Linus, I don't know where we are. This is a blank place. Show me where are we? What, where, where exactly am I standing in your system? The command to do that is print working directory. And Linus will tell you, in my tree of systems, you are standing in the branch called Ayaki, which is hosted by the branch called Home, which is coming from the root. Oh, you say, oh, is that where I am? Okay, then show me what, what is here in this room where I am now. What are the leaves? connected to this brand. The command is ls. And then it displays the whole face. Like you can see, the same name we have on the right are displayed on the left. Desktop, documents, uh, downloads, music. Do you see them? Just sequentially like that. Mm -hmm. And then another way to list them, maybe in the better way that will make more sense, would be to say the same command, ls, but this time you now say minus l, which means list them vertically. And then you see the same thing is displayed, but this time it's not vertically listed, giving you more information. This information will be useful later about those objects. Right? Oh, you say, okay. So in this room that I am, there's a cupboard, there's a wardrobe, there's a hanger, there's a TV. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. Now, or maybe that's just my own way of interpreting it. Maybe you want to say, oh, there are so many doors. One door is leading to a place called desktop. One door is leading to another tiny room called document. Another door is leading, all right? In Windows, if you wanted to check what is inside desktop, you simply double click desktop like this. Mm -hmm. But here, in CLI, to see what is inside desktop, this is where to do it. You see, change directory to desktop. That's the first step. And you see that you have now moved into desktop. And then you can now say, Look around what is inside here. The command to look around to see what is inside is ls minus l. And what does this tell you? It shows you there is absolutely nothing inside here. It's an empty room. Exactly what it shows you on the left hand side when it says empty folder. Mm -hmm. Folder is empty. Here it says folder is empty. This is Linux's own way of showing you that folder is empty. It says total content zero. Oh, yes. right. The first one, the first one says total zero, meaning the whole directories from desktop to video is it's an empty directory. So, so then no, 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 no. 
Is that from desktop means? to video? No, no, that's not what it means. You are in desktop, so everything you are seeing here is related only to desktop. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find out what is inside video, the way mm -hmm. to do is, is to get out of desktop and lock the door. I mean, and shut the door behind you. To do that, you see CD space dot dot. You see, you are no longer inside desktop. Desktop is no longer showing as part of your prompt. So you are now in your home folder. Now that you have your step out, you can now say CD. Okay, I have an idea. Let me put, let me just show that in diagram. Let me quickly go to, let me quickly go to share this. All right, so let me take this out. Yeah, let me explain the directory system first. Well, not in detail, just a little bit. <sighs> All right, so you have a directory system. So directory home, directory A key. Uh, Okay, anything is okay. Directory, uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be smaller. You can make it bigger, it doesn't matter. Directory, uh, on top of directory, yeah, yeah, can you have directory desktop, directory videos, directory, all the seven directories are here. Okay. As many directories as I want to create, I create it on top of. So this is the idea. So I'm in desktop now. To get out of desktop in order to come to videos, for example, I cannot do that. No, there's no road there. What I must do is come back out of desktop into this place, and then from here, I can go into here. So to come out from desktop one step back, the command is cd space dot dot. And then to go here, I'll see CD, the name of this directory. Oh, if I, maybe I'm looking for a file. I get, ah, the file is on here, where's the file? I'll get out of the door again, come here, and then come back here and go in from here. Ah, the file is still not here. I'll get out again, and then come back and go, oh, the, the file is finally here. The file I've been looking for. This is where you are hiding. Come on, now I'm looking for you. I want to send you to our head office. Then you may not find the file there. So this idea of go in, search, get out again, go in, look, take a look around, get out again. That is what we are practicing when we say CD, the name of the directory, CD dot dot, that is get, get me out of here. Then CD again, the name of the directory, then LS minus L, that is list the whole content of the directory and so on and so forth. And then once you are done here, you can see CD dot dot, it will take you to, to the name directory below. And then you say CD dot dot, it will take you to the name directory below. And then see the dot dot it says you. But if you keep going to the next directory below, it gets to a directory where there is no longer another directory below. That's the last directory. It is on this directory that this ground floor, that all other floors are built. This last directory, this final directory from which other directories, other folders germinate, is called the root directory, represented by that sign. So if this is the root directory, then if the name of this directory is home, for example, then this one will be represented by root home. And then if the name of this directory is A Akin, for example, then this directory is represented by root home A Akin. So if you are staying here and you see print working directory, what directory am I in? This is what Linux is going to tell you that you're in the directory home here. All right, I'm going to take a long break here until everybody understands this system, then we can go and practice it. Questions? So the most important thing in this learners to, to better understand it more, it's like you're trying to like know the basic, um, uh, the commands, the key commands. Mm -hmm. Yes, learn the commands to do what you want Linux to do. 
You want so, to move from uh, one directory to another, and then the command. Yes. So for for those command, how can we how can we get it? Like, do we have to search it in Google or? We'll no, find that's it. what you pay for now. We'll be learning them one by one. By the okay. time you are done with this course, you 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 have learned like one hundred fifty five commands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gonna be learning them one 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 one, and then we'll run into something. Yeah, how do we do it? We don't even remember. Then okay. we'll find it. Then we just it's like building learning language. We are building the vocabulary. At the end of the linear class, you may not remember all the one hundred fifty, but. At least mm -hmm. like 70, 80 should be handy because you'd have used them over and over and over, over the next problem. Okay. So, so you have your notes. Yes. Yeah. So for these commands, do they have like how you have in English, you have synonyms and you know things you can use interchangeably for the same result? Like we have the ls minus l to list it vertically. Is there any other thing that you can also use to command to list it vertically? Or it just has to be the ls minus l. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I understand your question. Yeah, your question no, there would be no synonym specifically. However, there will be various ways of achieving the same goal without necessarily you. Okay, let's say this is the goal you want to achieve, and then you say to achieve this goal, I enter three commands. First of all, I say CD to the place, I say LS, then I say copy. Yes, that is beautiful. Set of three commands. But somebody else can know just one command to achieve that same goal without necessarily using your method. Okay. Yes. But in place of, uh, can you replace one particular command with another equivalent command? Not really. However, you can achieve the goal without necessarily using that command. You can use a different command entirely. That is, okay. I'd come in here without passing through this door, but pass through this door. And that is where the expertise lay. So if you come here using five commands to get in here, and I'm able to come in here and say, what are you doing? What's the five commands? Just one command will do it. I'm better than you. I'm probably on the 15,000 per month. And maybe, maybe you are in a, on a 9,000 per month. So what would, what would make you get to that point? Is it the constant pra practice, practice or? Okay. Practice, yes. Okay. Practice. I do something in class. You don't say it's too hard. You do it by yourself as well. And then okay. I give you assignment. You go and do it. You research. The, the whole idea of researching, which is research, it's not really researching. Just look it up for about five minutes you are done. The whole idea is to challenge your make you build your vocabulary muscles to know, oh, okay, this is, no. So practice is, your, is the answer to that question. Okay. So by the time we configure the services that I have in line for, uh, in stock for you, all the heavy, heavy uh, FTP, uh, uh, Samba, NFS, yeah, there are some tick tick commands that we are going to use towards the end of this program. If you really follow me and we'll do all of that together, there's no Linux interview you should not be able to pass. Unless you are claiming 15 years, 20 years experience, then they will give you tougher questions. But if you are coming in with a, a humble four years experience, three years experience or less, then I have tough, tough projects that will really test what you, what you learn. So we are learning the commands to know how to do simple, simple things. But at the end of the day, we want to be able to use those as assemble those commands to do major things. So I'll give you a project that will require, I don't even know how many commands. All I just need is just, this is the difficulty I'm facing in this company. Use your Linux knowledge to solve this problem for me. So whether you achieve it with 30 different commands, whether you sleep, it takes you three sleepless nights to achieve, that is not my problem. Just do it. And I'm happy when you do it. It doesn't matter how difficult it was. But if you do not do it, then I'm not happy. Just do it. So it, at the end of the day, it's really about doing it more. But at some level, if we can all do it, then what will differentiate one person from the other is who is able to do it faster. That person will be rated better, even though we are all able to. Uh,
Yes, questions. So like you, somebody said, all we are doing here is learning, first of all, learning commands. This is a command for this purpose. This is a command to do this. This command does this. And then later on, using a combination of three, four, five commands to achieve something meaningful. Hmm? Like a task, like a project. Yeah, right. um, we, we started. Yeah. Does um, the Windows MS DOS, like, does it have kind of similar um, a, a function with this uh, Linux? Yes, it's similar. As okay. a matter of fact, Microsoft, mm -hmm. uh, Bill Gates extracted MS DOS from Linux. He felt that ah, Linux from Unix originally because there was no Linux at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this concept of uh, Unix, it's so hard to learn, it's so hard to use the, uh, uh, what were those machines called? Mm -hmm. uh, the big, big machines there. Why don't we extract the Unix and then convert it to graphic user environment where people can simply click instead of writing commands. And then you gave it a new name and then he successfully extracted the commands and converted, yes, it's similar. He yeah. built the GUI on MS-DOS. I started using computer. I don't know if I shared that with you earlier on, when it was MS-DOS. Yeah, I did not, because... system met me in Windows, yeah. So why I asked you the question, yeah, go on. Why, why I asked the question was because uh, back then we used to use floppy disks. I don't know if you remember floppy disks. Back where? Why are you talking like, uh, how old are you, Francis? <laughs> uh, back, like, back, back to what year? Uh, that was around uh, 2002 or 2001, 2002. Small boy, small boy. <laughs> You're asking me back then, back then. Exactly, you remember, actually. So, exactly, you remember. Can you imagine, Victor, you're asking me if I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that have been in computer since 1993, 1994. Uh, uh, so, Mr. Yes, I do remember. So, yeah. Then we used to like, if you want to copy something from, um, I think if you want to copy something to a floppy disk, you, you normally would do mm -hmm. it in the MS DOS command. We use a command to do that, to copy something into exactly. floppy disks. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. This is very similar to that. Mm -hmm. Is very similar. When you say copy space slash slash uh, exactly. f, mm -hmm. uh, f slash this, yeah. it's the same thing. But this time, instead of C O P E for copy, you are going to do C P. That does it. Okay. Very similar. So if you already have that background, then Linux will be easy for you. I can assure you. Well, it's been long though. Yeah, as we do then, now you they will come to mind. They will come. They will, they will, you wake up your memories. Is the note um going to have this command? Yes, the note is full of these commands. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Yes. Okay. The note is command, command, command. In fact, we'll be following the notes. We'll be taking the commands from the notes. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go and... Uh, Let's go get our hands dirty. Let's go and do some practice. So we'll go uh, this, this, this. All right, so we are here again. So let us continue. Uh, what's my password? Remember, space bar will open this password, please. And then uh, we go to the other area and also open. All right, so let me come back here. So right now, I don't even know where I am. I'm confused now. So I asked the, I asked Linux, print working directory, that is, where am I? He tells me, ah, you don't know where you are. You are in a, 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 and a, a, a is on home directory, and home is on the root. Okay, okay. All right, so take me out of a, a, a. 
to get out of ART, I'll do CD space dot dot. In MS DOS, it will be CD dot dot without space. But right here with Linux is space uh, CD space dot dot. All right. So you press enter. If you now ask Linux, where am I? Print working directory. It's going to tell you you have moved out of Aaking. You are now in home. That's why it's showing you home slash home. Say okay. So I know I'm in slash home. Now get me out of home one step from this floor to the floor below, just below it. The command is cd dot dot. All right. Now that I have done cd dot dot, where am I now? Print working directory. You are now in root. Root. And this root is the last place, is the root of the tree. There is no other place to go. So even if you say cd space dot dot one more time, it's still, and you say print working directory, you are still in root because this is the last floor. There's no other place to go. So that's why it's called root. This is where every other directory germinate. All right. So if you want to take a look at what is available here, what's, what's, on, what's on this route? The command is ls minus l. Oh, so many directories in root. There's this directory, there's bool, there's dev, there's etsy, there's home, there's okay. Okay, take me into one of these directories. Take me into var, you see cd, var, this one. That is how to move into a directory that you see. Because these are the doors in front of you with these labels. You open the door and get in, you see the CD var. And then you see, you see, from root, you are now in var. All right? Even without saying print working directory, I can tell right away that I'm already in var. And var is in root. But in any case, since you are still new, you may want to do print working directory, and it tells you that you are in var and var is in root. Want to take a look around and see what var contains? The command is ls minus l. And then you see that var contains all of these directories. Some are directories, some are files. Okay, maybe you're interested in one of them. Accounts, wow. This must be somebody has account, account number. Let me go and see how much it has. So you see cd accounts. No, no s. And then it shows you you have moved now from var to account. All right, so what's inside? ls minus l. And then there is a file inside called part p, p account, personal account maybe, and so on and so forth. That's not the interest. So to get out of here, one step back, you see cd space dot dot. And then print working directory, you are in var, cd space dot dot. Print working directory, you are in root. If I do say cd space dot dot, I can no longer move. There is no other place to go below root. I will still remain in root. If I say print working directory, it's the same root that I was in at STN. All right? So this is how to navigate between directories, from one directory to another directory. All right, let's uh, follow the note now and begin to learn and continue to learn more commands. All right, so I look at my notes and I come here to uh, Hello, excuse me, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, um, what's that var? Just a quick one, please. Var is a directory. I don't want to go for now into the meaning of directories and what is uh, what they have. Well, you saw that there, there were many directories. I just happened, I just wanted to show you how to go into a directory and come out of a directory. Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you. All right. All right, so let's continue. So this is cd dot dot. So let's, uh, let's continue. I want to show you make directory, change directory, cd slash, cd ls. Okay, let's continue. So let me go back, let me minimize this. <sighs> let me clear the screen. C, in MS-DOS, it will be CLS to clear the screen. But well, that's a DOS command, not Unix, not uh, Linux commands. In Linux, it's C clear. 
you spell it in full clear. So you just clear the screen. All right, so where am I? I can tell what I am, but for your sake, let me just say PWD. I'm in root directory. So let me go into my home directory. Every user has a room that is created from him where he can do whatever he wants. And he must not do, he cannot actually do whatever he wants outside his room. To do whatever you want, you must be in your room. For A, acting as a user, the directory that was created for him is uh, home A, acting. Let me get into my own directory because who is logged in right now? This is the person that is, logged. this is the user that is logged in, A, acting. So for A Akin to be able to work fully with full privileges, he has to be inside his room and not come to somebody else's room and mess things up, all right? So to get into my room, I'll say CD. Okay, let me, so that you know, let's do LS minus L, all right? <clears throat> all home directories are created inside home. So I need to be here. To, to get there, I'll say CD. Home. So you can see now that I'm not in home, right? If I do ls minus l, I'm going to see that the only directory, the only user that has a room that room has been created for is Aakin. And that's me. So let me go in there and say cd Aakin. Right? Ls minus l. Oh, I'm in Aakin now. This sign is called tilde. And it tells me that I am in my own native home where I can do whatever I like. All right, it's called tilde. All right, but for you, you are not used to tilde. You may still want to do print working directory for you to see the whole pattern for you to be convinced that, oh, finally, I'm in my home. I'm in Aachen. Oh, beautiful. Just like. Something happens in America, then you get to Nigeria and you touch down, and then one person is, ah, you just remember this is my country, you just be, you know, the confidence is, is more than you ever had before. That's an assumption, it's not true for all of us. All right, so you are here now. So now that you are here, you cannot do stuff. Let us assume that you want to create a new directory for, for anything, maybe for, for your staff or for somebody, okay? Now you can create a directory. Right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight directories. Let us create one more. The command to create a new directory is make directory. The MS does the command is make directory. But here the command is make directory. Make directory. And then what do you want to call the directory? Call it, uh, call it, uh, huh? Or call it demo.
Wait, what happened? Is everyone still here or is it just me? Yeah, I'm here. I think Mr. Aki went offline now. Yeah, we still okay. here. All right. Yeah, we're here. Just wanted to be sure. All right. Mr. Aki can um, can have a kind of a text or like a little textbook or pamphlet or something that can just show us like um, different commands, go in, create folder or do delete or you know just I think it will help too you know just go through the go through the commands time to time and you know. He said it's in the notes. We're gonna see all those in the notes. Yeah, Hello? that's what he's he's, he's gonna tell you is in the notes. <laughs> Hello? But definitely it should be in the notes, huh? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. If it's in the notes, it's gonna be in the, if it says it's in the notes, it's definitely gonna be there. Right. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, we can hear you. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened though. My modem just went in. Then I will have more data. Okay, so I restarted the model. So I'm back here now. Okay. Cabo. All uh, right. Okay, so sorry about that. Let's continue. Uh, okay, I don't even know what point I am, but we just, no problem, I repeat. Uh, okay, so you can see my screen, right? Am I sharing screen? No. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, share screen. Share. Share. Now, see me typing. Hello, if you don't tell me what you see, I, I, I don't I don't know what you see. You can so see your screen. You can you see the screen. Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I come in. Uh, I heard somebody saying, uh, I will say it's in the note. Have I, do you think I can deceive you and tell you it's not in the note if it's in the note, if it's not there? No, hmm? we're, just no. we're talking Some about, yeah, how, uh, if we can get like a, uh, 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 like a pamphlet or something that just uh, gives us the whole command that has to do with this whole, um, like the one. Everything is on the internet. Now. People are doing self study to, to pass uh, this certification. Uh, okay. okay. I see it on uh, Instagram every day. People will just summarize the whole, uh, the whole uh, Linux commands into one page and tell you basically. I have a note for you, so I don't know why you're worrying about all that. Things. I don't know why you're looking here and there. You pay six hundred dollars for this course, so I prepared the best for you. I've read all of those materials. I've extracted the ones that I feel. Good. If you say, you already said it's going to be in the note. I'm scrolling through the notes. I don't know where your fear was coming. Anything get outside. Class proper in this direction that we have. Uh, so, uh, can can barely hear you, Mr. Aki. Uh, we can't hear can you. you. We're life. breaking up. We have to change location now. Change location? <laughs> yes, because uh, I, mean, I may have to move from this office to a different one where I don't know what's wrong with my internet. Oh, okay. So that I can have access to a different body. Mm, I think we let's can. see. Yeah, so, let's see. If 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 I'm switched off again for any reason, you just, um, just do like 
10 minutes or 15 minutes, me, no, not up to 15. Seven minutes walk to a new place and then I'll set up there if it happens to them. Otherwise, let's keep money. Okay. Oh. So let's continue. Any question? Ah, so let's go. So, 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 where's our uh, Windows? Where's our, uh, sorry, our uh, Linux OS? Okay. All right. So here we were trying to do CD daily. Remember? We have a directory called daily. I will create it. I said to open the door, the command is CD daily. And then now that we're in daily, that like we can see here, the prompt is showing daily now. We can add on the light to see what is inside. And that command is LS minus L. And there is nothing inside daily. Okay. But we can create another directory inside daily. We can create a, a directory called uh, John. Yeah. Uh, to create John. To create John, we say make directory J O H N. And uh, mm -hmm. Linux is case sensitive. J O H N with small letter J is different from J O H N with big letter J. So they are not, they are two different things. So be careful when you are using, maybe let me just stick with capital letter begin J O H N, J O H N, John. All right, ls minus l. So I have John there. To so go into John, cd, j o h n. What's inside j o h n? John, ls minus l, nothing. So let me go, let me create bool inside that. I'll say make directory bool. And then if I do ls minus l, I find that there is bool inside. If I say cd bool, I mean bool now. If I take a look around, there is nothing inside. And I, keep, I can keep making, creating directory, inside directory, inside directory, inside directory. But right now, if I say print working directory, it's going to tell me that I'm inside the directory bool. And bool is inside another directory, John. Mm -hmm. John is inside a directory called daily. Daily, daily is inside the directory called Aaking. Yeah, okay. Aaking is inside the home directory. Oh, okay. And home directory is on the root. So that's the full part name of that working directory. So to move from bool now to John, what's the command? CD space dot dot. So if I say print working directory, you see that. You have a question? Yes, I, I was going to say, ask questions. So what if you want to move from bool all the way to home? Yes, that's possible. Okay. If you can reason it, then it is possible. Okay. So see, let's see where we are. P D, I mean P W D. So right now, John, to move from John all the way to home, all the way to root, the command, instead of doing it step by step, is to take the lift. So to take the lift and avoid uh, what is it? Avoid daily, avoid acting, avoid home and go straight to root. The command is C D space root. Oh no. CD space root. Where's root? Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. CD root. No. Sorry. Control C. I got something. No, no, no. CD. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not doing Microsoft. I'm mixing this with Microsoft. CD root. PWD. The root is this backslash, not the Microsoft root. Mm -hmm. mm, this one, not this one, this one. The forward slash is a... Yes, forward slash, yes, sorry. Okay. So CD forward slash, not CD backslash. So that's the answer anyway. So wherever you are, that you are in the 20th directory inside another one, to go home straight without branching right. one by one, it's always this command, CD root. Good question. All right. Well, let us go back to, if we also wanted to go back straight to, where was that last, this one? Then the command would also be go straight there without branching home, ARK, daily. So it would be, 
Yeah, I can actually. So I can it's... copy this, copy, and then paste here right away. Paste. All right. So CD, all this will just take me straight to John. So let's press enter. And then where are we now? Print dropping directory. We are now here. So just the same way you can pay, use a single command to go home, you can also use a single command to get to the floor where you want to be. Beautiful. All right. So that's what I meant by somebody else using CD home, CD Ayakin, CD Daily, CD John, CD Bull to get to floor seven. Yes, eventually you'll get the work done. But the person who used a single command to achieve it would have finished work before much earlier than the other person. And companies are looking for people like that who will save them time, save them money, and do the work of three people together as one person. All right, question. Somebody was going to ask a question. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask, so wh when are we required to put a space bar in between commands? Uh, don't worry, you'll get there. You are just starting to learn. Okay. Space bar, space bar, space bar. What do you mean space bar? Like, you know, like where, here now you wrote, uh, you know where they have the the host, uh, the uh, a -K at local host. Then you okay. have the dollar sign, space bar, CD, space bar, forward slash home, sla forward slash a -K, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, now okay, you this one. Mm -hmm, exactly. So remember you entered a command here that you said CD, you no space bar, you just put the forward slash and it told you bash CD forward slash anyway. Yeah. And retrace, yeah. Yeah, once uh, you know you are learning. Once if you are not used to if you don't remember what it is, enter what you remember. If it is correct, to accept it. If it's not correct, by the time you try the correct one two, three times, the Correct one will stick. Okay. Yeah, because uh, if I tell you now that uh, uh, the way I knew it was because I have used this so many times. So the ones that have space, you will get to know them. And then, well, the, the best answer is just try anything that comes to your mind. If it works, that is it. If it does not work, then you keep trying. Another command like that is if you wanted to find out if Java was installed on this system, you do Java minus version, and then it will tell you, yes, mm -hmm. uh, Java is installed. That's strange. Who installed Java? I did not install Java. Anyway, Java is installed. But some other commands, you want to find out if other commands are installed. Instead of Java uh, minus version, it will be Java minus minus version. So the question now is, when, how do you remember which command will take minus version and which command will take minus minus version. It's not for me to be. So what I'll just do is, I enter the command, I try minus version. If it works, that's the right command. If it does not work, then I enter the command, I try minus minus version. By the time I try two of them, one of them must work. Instead of me killing myself over, out of the 15 possible uh, services that will be loading, how do I test them one by one? So don't worry about it. Just test the one that you remember. I don't know if, uh, if I confused you more, but uh, the point I'm trying to make is uh, you will know. Yeah, any other question? Um, so I'm just, uh, maybe it's just my curiosity. I'm just wondering how this has to be better than the GUI, the graphic okay. engine. <laughs> so I'm just yeah. curious why anybody would yeah. think this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get you, I get you. It is because it allows scripting, it allows automation. Okay. So if you had 20 tasks to do with GUI, you would have to do it 20 times, 20 unique times. But with CLI, you can write a simple script that you run and it will do that task for you 200 and one, one, one time over 200 records, over two, 3 million records. Okay. So that's where the advantage is hidden. Makes sense now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Scripting you cannot do with uh, Google. So uh, CLI is just like, it's just the same. It's like um, in Mac OS, it's just the terminal utility, right? Just yes. kind of the same thing. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. In fact, Mac OS has its own scripting and its own CLI 
so much that is competing seriously with Linux and you don't, except that you want to interface uh, and work for organizations that use Linux, Mac OS by itself has utility that is almost equivalent to Linux. Yeah, because this dollar sign in front of this uh, CLI now, mm. now it must in, in Mac OS terminal, there's mm. the way if you want to like, let's say you want to create a, re a rebootable floppy disk or operating system, you want to mm. create it. Um, so in the beginning of it, you will still, you will still see this dollar sign. In yes. Some, yes. You know, okay. yes. And that's even another statement. You go to Cisco router, you are doing CCNA or CC, you are configuring Cisco equipment. Mm -hmm. This is this Cisco interface. And you are wondering, ah, but this is Cisco. Now, how come we are doing it here? This is a exactly Cisco interface. The dollar sign, the things we are entering here, mm -hmm. the arch sign, if you want to sign it at administrator, mm -hmm. and all of that is exactly the same thing Cisco. The only thing is that Cisco would only take commands that have been built to work for networks but Linux can take any command. So Linux is more robust, but Cisco is streamlined to networking commands. So you're right. It's the same, you know, Linux is open source. Anybody can build, uh, uh, anybody can build anything. Somebody can build the refrigerator, build, yeah. put Linux operating system. Yeah, this is the most uh, free, free uh, net, I've forgotten what they call it. The most free yeah. operating system, I don't like that. Uh, yeah, that's the meaning of open source. It's just there for anybody to pick, put in your router, pick, put in your switch, pick, put in your uh, Tesla car. And then, so what other operating system will Tesla use other than Linux? Maybe we'll convert it and call it Tesla OS, but I'm sure it was picked originally from Linux and then modified. Because anybody can take it because it's open source. That's the meaning of open source. Anybody can take it, modify it, and give it a different name. All right, so I can take it, modify it. Instead of Kali, I can call it Aki Linux, and so on and so forth. So the same. And then when you are using it, you just say, ah, but it's the same thing. Yes, it's exactly the same. They are built around the same original Unix operating system. All right, so that also is in addition to the question that uh, that person asked earlier on about the curiosity about how come this is uh, more versatile than GUI because your ability to use this now means that you're also learning Mac OS, you are learning Linux, and uh, you are learning uh, router configuration. You are learning so many things unconsciously. You don't know it, but you're getting used to this and knowing this just means that you are getting used to how operating systems generally operate. And that's what we talk about enterprise. You are learning so many things in one. Yeah, I mean, the command that you use may not exactly be the same, but the environment is the same. So if you know what to do in that environment, mm -hmm. you can achieve what you do. All right, let's continue to learn commands. Or if you want to relax your brain, maybe it's getting too hot. You can keep asking questions. <laughs> It's actually getting interesting. Yes. <laughs> That's what I do. Hmm? Ah, what are the okay? So, let's see who let's see who is in class. Mr. Okay, that, that uh for that you created that can we like see it like in the um, the GUI uh, interface? Ah yes, yes, good one. Yeah, we can see everything we have done now uh, in the you are, you are asking your child to go and do something. You don't want your child to come and lend it just to be able to save his game. So give him the GUI interface to work on. Okay, let's let's see that in the GUI. Everything we'll be doing here, let's take a look at the GUI. Okay, so what do we do? No, I'm trying to close something. Control. Okay, so I have my control now. All right, so to go to, go to GUI, I go to applications and I go to files. All right, so it's already there waiting for us. So let's go home. And inside home, I have Daily. Inside Daily, I have John. Inside John, I have Bull. And that is the last place. Let's quickly create a folder here. And you see that we we'll also go and find the folder in Linux, in, uh, yes, in CLI. In Bull, let us put uh, Greg, all right, and say create. 
this is a beautiful way to do it in Goi. And that's why that man is wondering, how can you leave this beautiful and simple way to go and be learning the hard? Right? So now that we've created Greg here, in fact, let us open Greg and see if we can put a file there. Can we put a file there? Yeah. Okay. I'd rather put a file from, from a, a CLI and then come and view it here. All right. So let's go to CLI now and see whether our Greg is reflected. So can you see my CLI? Mm -hmm. All right. Print working directory, John. Okay. So what's inside John? LS minus L. Bo. Okay. Mm. Get me into Bo. CD, Bo. All right. What's inside Bo? LS minus L. Awesome, Greg is there. So if we get into Greg now, all right, let us quickly create a file in Greg. I know we are not right here, but let me just use it to show you. To create a file, let me say touch, mm, touch, uh, let's call the file, my file, file one, file one dot text. And then put into file one dot text echo. This is our first first file in Linux. Put that one in the file text file one dot text. No dot text. File1.txt, and then what do you have in file1.txt now? Cut file1.txt. Okay, that's what I have here. This is our first file in Linux. Now let's go to GUI environment and see, because it's the same place. It's just a different way of doing the work and see if this, this what we did is reflected here. So let's go back home. Then we open daily, we open John, we open Bull, we open Greg. And then we'll file file one dot test. Let's open it and see the content. What does it say? This is our first file. Exactly what we did. Was that your question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if we go to CLI, um, I noticed that you used in making or creating a new file, you use touch instead of the MKDIR. Yeah, MKDR is to create directory. Okay. Not okay. Fine. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, let's continue to learn commands, the basic ones, one by one. Uh, let's clear the screen so that uh, we don't remember these other ones. So let's look at our Word document to see what other simple commands we should learn. Now we know how to make directory, how to cd dot dot, how to cd slash straight home, how to do cd in and cd out, how to do ls minus l, how to do pw do, and how to clear this screen. Awesome. So we're done with all of that. Is there anybody who cannot use any of these commands, this first set of commands? by just creating and navigating directory. All right, everyone understands that. All right, so let, let us now create and edit files. We're done with directories. You know what directory is are now? Just the place where you keep files, the folders. So let us learn commands to create files. And uh, in, in fact, we already did that, but let's do it again. Torch, cat, echo, Editor. Let's do it again. All right, so uh, yeah, let's just stay here and do more. So ls minus, we created the first file. Let's create a second file. There are different ways to create files. One easy way, one, one of the many ways to create file is to do touch and then the name of the file. It simply means create an empty file. That's the meaning of touch. Create a file, call it file, I hope you know that if we say create a file, call it file one.txt. This file one.txt is different from this file one.txt because system, whether Windows or Linux, will not accept the same file name two times. It will tell you file already exists. 
but these two files are different. Why are they different? So let's go ahead and enter. It accepted it. So we have two files. How come it's showing us ls minus l? Two files, the same name. What's the difference? The, the lowercase and uppercase. F, yes, that's the difference. So that's what I meant by Linux is case sensitive. All right. So they are different files because of the different case. So now we have created a file by the command touch. What is inside this file? So to find out the content of, of that file, to display the content, the command is cat. Cat the name of the file. Cat file one dot text. And if you want, you can copy and then paste here. But uh, I'd rather just type the whole type file name than copy and paste. Maybe I can do copy and paste for long commands. Anyway. Anyway, so this one is telling us that there is nothing inside the file. That's why it's not showing us anything. So the file is empty. In fact, if you see uh, ls minus l, you are going to see that even though the first file contains 32 characters, equivalent to 32 uh, equivalent to 32 bytes of space. This one has zero character equivalent to, there is nothing, there is no space. This, the content of this file is not by, and let's put something into that file. What do you want to put into the file? Just anything. To put something, the command is echo. Echo, then you put quote, uh, Demo. Let's see my first line of the file. All right. And then you close quote and then you say put it in file one dot text. All right. So that's the command. All right. So if you now do cat again, by the way, you can use your up arrow key to call up your command so that I don't have to type them all the time. So if what I want to cat card file, I typed it only recently. I'll just use my arrow key to call it, to recall it. And then once it shows, I press enter. This time it's showing me, yes, I do have content in the file. And the content is my first line of the file. All right, did you understand that? So, uh, he said the, the echo is to put in to create something inside that inside the file right yes to put content in the file okay to put content inside the content so wherever wherever the, um, the quote closes is where the content stops i believe yeah yes okay uh Udu, are you with are you still with us Yes, sir. Everything is making sense, right? Yes, sir. I'm listening. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. This is minimum 60K job at the end of this. If you can prove that you know it, maybe 70. But this one, look, I cannot get you to six figure. So if you are listening and it's making sense so far, then there is hope. I know some of you are already doing more than that, but uh, for some of you that are just coming to IT, that'd be a great way to enter it. All right, uh, who else is here? Abiola Manjako Dumi. Abiodun Adeleke. Where is... Uh, where is... Uh, I thought I saw... The database lady, where is she? Oh, yeah. Chidi. Chidi, are you here? Okay. Okay, so let's go on. Let's continue. So if we have a... Uh... Now. 
Let us add one more line to this content, to this file. We already added, added the line. Let's add one more line. The command will be the same. So since we already use that command, then uh, let's just call it instead of typing all over again. So this time we say echo my second line to the file. So that one, right? It's not, it's not the same thing. But if I do, okay, let me do it. So if I press that, it's done, right? So let me say cut, cut. Ah, let me not type it. Let me recall the last card. Ah, my second line. Is this what I wanted to achieve? No, this is not what I wanted to achieve. What I wanted to achieve was to retain the first line and then append, add a second line to that first line. So I did not achieve it. That's not what I, in order to achieve what I wanted to achieve, this is what I should have done right. I did this wrong deliberately. So let, first of all, let me return the let me return the file to the original state. Cut file one dot text. All right. So, so this is the original state. So what I want to do from here is to at, append the second line. All right, to attend, append the second line, what I should do differently is uh, echo that, but now I should put double greater than instead of single greater than. So this double greater than means retain the existing content, just add this one to it. If I now say cut the file, I'm not going to see that there are two lines. So the file contains two lines, the first line is my first line, and then the second is my second. Awesome. <sighs> Questions? Now you know how to use the echo command, how to use the cat command, and how to use the append, single append and double append. So, so, so does yes. that mean that if you want to add like a third line, it will be three times <laughs> yeah <laughs> like like somebody asked in the first class no it's always true okay, okay let's do it mm -hmm. yes i already knew what the question was doing so let's do one more so let's say echo my third line and then we are still using double it's always double all right, and then for now, say cut file one. We're going to see three lines, so it works with them. Oh, okay. You want to add a fourth line, a fifth line, a seventh line, a hundred line, the double. Or the yes, double. Yeah, good question. Yes. I'm not rushing the command, so I'm just taking it easy. All right. So if you understand that, then let's take one more command. What's the next command? So we have how to touch, how to cut, and how to echo. What about editor? There's something called editor. Uh, Mr. Ake? Yeah. Uh, what of uh, copy? I will get there. We're not there yet. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. So for now, let's get to edit, editor, text editor. There are three popular text editors. Just take one that you use, and that's OK. You don't need to name more than one. Depending on your favorite. The three popular text editors, let me put them in the notes. I show them. Text editors, where are they? Linux text editors, they are Nano, VI, and V. All right? Me, I just stick with VI. VI is okay for me. All right? So how do you use VI? How do you use text editors? Okay, to use text editors, it simply means come here, 
and do VI if I'm using VI. If I was using Nano, I'll do Nano. If I'm using Vim, I'll do Vim. If whatever I'm using, I just type it here, and then I'll give the file a name. Let's give the file a name. Let's call it file three dot text. And then it brings me to this screen. This is text editor. I cannot create my file here. All right, to create my file, I'll just type what I want. This is my third file demonstrating the use of text editor yeah, to create files. All right, I'm done. Once I'm done, I'll press escape. I'll press colon. I'll press W for write, Q for quit, and bang. I'm done. So if I do LS minus L now, I'm going to see that and I have three files. I just created the third one. You know the content of the third one? Let's check the content. Cat file three dot text. All right. This is the third file. This is the one I just created. So I have a feeling I'm rushing. Let me take it easy. So one way to create file is to do uh, touch, then echo. Another way to create a file is to do VI or Vim or Nano, then the file name, all right? So obviously, if you are going to create a long file that requires a lot of lines, you want to go into VI, settle down, and do it there. But if, or if all you want to do is just create a sample file that you want to use to train or something, then maybe you want to just do it on your screen using Touch. But the tools are available to you. It's up to you how and when you want to use them. All right, questions, and then I, I'll, I'll ask questions now. You ask me questions first. Uh, Mr. K, can you have a picture? So you said, what are the three text editors? What are they used for? Uh, they are used to create text files. Okay. For example, Nano. Can you see me writing Nano? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, Nano. What's the name of the file? File form. Dot text. If I want, I if I may not put the extension. It doesn't matter. I can just call it file form. So it brings me to this screen where I can put in what I want to type. So I'm creating a file. I'm putting content into file instead of doing echo. You get it. Okay, yeah. That's what it, that's what the text editor is, just like your notepad in Windows or your word pad. Okay. Text editor. So is the nano nano is it different from the uh, the V VI? Yes, nano is a text editor, VI is a text editor, Vim is a text editor. These are the three text editors. Okay. So for you, this may look more appealing because it's just telling you, look at it down. It's telling you to go to previous page, type control Y. To go to next page, type control. This might be easy for you. I mean, why am I bothering myself with VI when this one is so simple? And when I want to exit, I just type control X. Uh, then they ask me, do you want to save yes or no? Look at the Y there. I take Y for yes. Yeah? File to save to file form. Yeah? And then what's the next thing? And then maybe press enter. Oh, so simple to use. Then you are wondering, ah, nano is so simple. So why, why not nano? So I'm using VI and then you are saying, well, nano is my favorite. Then you go with nano. So that's why the options are there. And somebody is, depending on our various backgrounds, where we are coming from. Some people are already programmers, some people are already database, some people are just new. Okay, so you can use any of them. But for me, like I said, uh, I started with VI, so I have no reason to begin to learn. What, how many things am I even doing with VI? Most of the time, I just type in Windows, copy, and paste into cloud. So VI is okay for me. Well, you can decide to do Vim. Vim, file what? File 5, and so on and so forth. By the way, let's see whether the file we created with Nano, whether it's actually there. What do we do? LS minus N. Look at the file, it's there, file 4. So let's cut, cut 
five, four. Look at the nonsense we tag. It's actually there. So it works. So Nano, VI, and Veeam, they are different text editors. Nobody will ever ask you that question. It's not an exam question. So use any one of them to create a file. I use VI to create file. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. All right, let me load the word and then let's, uh, the class is too quiet. Let's take it easy. Let's take it slowly. No, not too quiet, but it's just that uh, more people should interact. Mm -hmm. So more people not interacting might mean that uh, we are leaving some people behind. So let's take it easy. Mm -hmm. All right. I think, we are, I think we are processing it in our head. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is a okay. lot to do. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it's a lot actually. And then uh, look at so many more to do, but let's just take it easy. Let's not scare you with others. Let's just focus on this. All right, so the next of set of commands we'll be looking at will be copy, move, and all of that. But before we get there, we have already learned uh, this one, how to use the uh, greater than, double greater than, they have to do this. All right? Yeah, we're making progress. I'm making progress. All right, so is there any of these other commands that you want us to revise? Any of the commands we've learned here? Uh, since we've learned this one, then we may as well move this one, Control X, and put them among the ones that we have. All right, so we know that what we have to learn will be from here. Yeah, before we learn more commands, you need us to revise any of the ones that we make directory, change directory, uh, cd dot dot, change directory backward one step, cd slash, change directory straight to root, cd, change directory, then the name of the directory you want to change, ls list, but well, normally I'll use ls minus l, list vertically with details. Print working directory, tell me where I am. I don't even know where I am. Clear the screen. Well, I want to start on the first slate, clean the slate. All right. File editor, touch. We create the file. Cat will display the content of the file. And echo would, uh, uh, let's do echo first. Control X. All right, so touch will create the file, echo will put content in the file and cat will display the content of the file. And then you can use this one. You will use this one with echo. So then man, there's something called man. What's the meaning of man? Let's do man. So if I do man ls, what does it mean? Man is manuscript. That is, give me the story, give me the history, give me the full, full literature on the command uh, ls. So what was the meaning of ls? ls means list directory content, all right? And then that tells you how to use it. When you say ls minus a, it means list all directory content. When you say ls minus capital A, it means list almost all, and so on and so forth. These are called... Uh, in MS DOS, they are called switches, and it comes slash comes before them. But here they are called options. In Linux, they are called options. So the real command is ls, but you can use any of these options with the command to tell that command how to behave. ls minus b, ls minus l, ls minus color. Like me now, I use ls minus l. What does that mean? Let's look for it. ls minus l m n. So ls minus l, where's l here? I, J, K, ls minus i, ls minus l, is that l? My 
Yes. Use, yeah, it means use long instead of the horizontally one. Use long listing format. You should As spread it vertical. vertically, yes. All right. So these are the different switches. But the good thing is learning these switches. You are not, if you learn these switches and you know to use them, you are not, you know, they are not useful for LS only. They are useful for the entire Linux commands. So whatever minus A means here, that is what it will mean irrespective of what Linux command you are using. All right. So again, as you do more and more of Linux work, you just might find yourself, ah, I'm asking for one thing, you are giving me 20 things. How will I be able to identify what I'm looking for? Give me the specific thing that I'm looking for. And you can use a switch to tell, I mean, uh, you can use an option to get the specific results. All right, so man, that used to be an exam question. If you are confused by a command or you want to learn how to use a particular command, there's something you don't remember. Where, what are the three resources? Where can you go? Google will usually not be one of the answers. So one answer is use man to find out more about that command so that you can know what switch or how to use that command. Man. It's not a command by, I mean, it's a command, but it's not, a, it's only for learning about commands, not really for to do anything. All right, so once you are done, you press uh, Q to quit. So press letter Q and then you are back. Okay, this one is cute. Uh, is, uh, yeah. I think MSOS is, um, is a Z or what? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do everything you are learning now. We are learning them for people proceeding to cloud because you will need them in cloud. So all of this, we'll go to Amazon and we'll deploy everything we are learning. We'll have projects that we need to implement in cloud. This pieces of tools that you use to do the real thing. And then you now say, okay, this is the reason we learn this. And even for people that want to become Linux administrators, yeah, unfortunately, they will still ask you, these days, companies are moving away from enterprise-based environments to cloud environments. So they still, even though you are a Linux expert, they will still need you to implement Linux for them in cloud environment. So they are still going to ask you, okay, oh, this is beautiful, you can do this, but can you do it in cloud? I don't have a server for you where you have to come to the office to turn on server every morning and no, 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 no. My server is in cloud. Can you stay, work from home and do this for me in cloud? So you find that ultimately, yeah, I guess you will still need to, I don't know. If I talk too much, it will look like uh, it's the money I'm interested in, but, uh, that's, that's how it is. All right, so. Let's not learn any more, any, any more commands today. Let's start where we, let's continue to learn commands tomorrow. Or let's just ask questions and uh, consolidate and do one. All right, so you need to go back now, spin up your Linux server, I mean, uh, in Linux, get them ready, and then start practicing this basic. It's all Linux, uh, OS 7, that we do. You can actually start any one you want, but I think it's better to do the one I'm doing so that uh, you'll be able to support each other and you not come back and say, ah, well, it's different there. This is how it is done here. No. If you can do OS 7, it will be best. And then, of course, you don't have this note yet. And by the way, I don't even know who I should give this note to because there are some people here who did not even mm -hmm. tell me I'll be in this class. All of a sudden, I've seen them in class. I know a few people have said, yeah, I'm interested, but I don't have the money now. I'll pay later. Okay. But, uh, and I, many of you have paid. Yes, many people here have paid. But there are still a couple of persons who they're here and then they are in class. So, 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 who am I going to send the notes to? Who is iPhone?
All right. Let me give you the remaining 30 minutes to talk. iPhone, what's your name? iPhone is Ayegba. Ayegba. Okay, Ayegba. I don't like how you know Nami. They close my killer. Questions? Yeah, I was. Okay, no questions. Okay, let me ask the question then. I didn't like ask question now, huh? Abi. <laughs> you know the talk for this, you just turn deaf and drop for class. Ask question. So Even you, you that is talking, the, the iPhone. Me, I, me I've already asked talking. like three questions today. Uh, were you I already asked like three day? questions. Huh? <laughs> no, I, was, I, was, I was in the class from the beginning of the class. I, I was asking the initial questions. Mm. I don't think we just go there for a dump or not. Like, say something. So if I don't have a question, uh, you want to force me to ask questions? <laughs> ask questions. Let us learn. Let us learn from your knowledge. Ah, uh, what? Those people that are deaf and dumb in class, don't mind, don't uh, direct them more. They might just be assimilating everything. That's what I'm mean. saying now. They will not talk. Now we'll be looking. I, I look like, 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 I don't know what I'm doing when I ask questions. Yes, I don't know mm -hmm. what I'm doing. I want to learn. That's why I'm asking questions. No, it's, it's, it's good question. to ask questions. Everybody benefits. Even I benefit from asking questions. Maybe from next class, everybody must ask questions. Everybody must talk. <laughs> don't force them or don't don't drive my students. So don't pursue them. Just leave them the way they are. Ah, okay, sir. It's not by force. <laughs> All right. So let me ask you questions now. How many distros of units do you know? Anybody can. Well. At least I know of the Red Hat. <laughs> okay. Sento 7. Okay. Sento OS 7. Oh, seven. Okay. Seven. Okay. Yeah, version 7. Okay. And Ubuntu. Ubuntu, okay. Okay, that's fine. All right. So at least you know three. You know the meaning of this product. That's what I wanted to find. All right. Then. Uh, <laughs> uh, where would uh, Linux OS be useful? Corporate environment or be more useful actually? Corporate environments or enterprise environments? Enterprise. Enterprise, correct. And what's the major difference between corporate and enterprise, enterprise environments? What's the well, number think, one factor here yeah, that differentiates those? Uh, enterprise is more, it's kind of this with a large uh, amount of um, uh, people, why corporate is kind of uh, um, small, you know, like a home or office um, kind of network. Uh, okay, okay. So who can, uh, who wants to throw more light on that? Yeah, who wants to throw more light on that? Hmm? Abiola Maja Kudumi, can you explain further what trans is meant by that? Hello, sir. No idea because I'm just getting home from work right now. Okay, so we can uh, explain further or oh, say the same thing from a different, uh, a different point of view. All right. So, what's the main? What's the big difference between? Uh, corporate networks and enterprise networks. The presence of service. Hmm? What's the big difference? I mean, uh, what's the major? Yeah, if I give you a sheet of paper, you might list up to seven, eight differences. But what's the most obvious difference? Where you say, ah, this one is an enterprise network, all different is operating.
All right, so write that down. And uh, I'm gonna give me an answer. Then let's uh, move on to another question. Then uh, another question. Let me look at that diagram to see if I can one question. Oh, nothing here. Okay. So you can uh, create directories in Linux to any level that you want, level 20, level 30, level 70, but the fundamental directory on which you create all of these directories and below which no directory exists, what is that directory called? The root. The root? Mm. You are not clear, I don't know. You're... Is it the root? Yes, it's called the root. It's called the root. All right. It's called the root directory, actually. Let's add the word directory. It's called the root directory. You know, when we created an account earlier on, and then we said the administrator, what did he call? What does Linux call administrator? And the root account. So uh, Linux calls administrator root. So in, in order to differentiate between that root that Linux calls administrator and the root that would you use to answer that question, we are going to call Uju's answer root directory. And then we'll call the administrator account root. Now you know the difference between the all right. Well, good answers. Good answers. So there's root as a the omnipotent user account, and then there is root directory, which is the foundation of all directories. Uh, what other question can I ask now? Uh, what other question? Uh, 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 uh. What is uh, what that what command can I use to view the content of a file? The cat cat command. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. What command would help me edit the content of a file? Oh, the VI. Uh, maybe it should have been what tool? What okay. tool can help me edit the content of a file? The, the VI. Yeah. Nano and the Vim, depending on which right. one you prefer to use. Right? Yes, so text editors, which are the three that you mentioned. Correct. Okay, so at least in theory, you know what things mean, even though there are two simple questions to be asked. Well, at this elementary level, they are good. Uh, and then if you want to how else can you create a, a file apart from uh, using the text editors? Aside using the text editors, is there any other way to create a file? The touch command. All right, the touch command mm -hmm. will help you create a file, and then the echo command will help you put content in the file. Uh -huh. Beautiful. All right. So you know these things in theory. Let's uh, let's go and set them up and then practice them. All right. So uh, that's it for one day. All right. So from your responses in theory. Not bad. Let's continue from there tomorrow. Hmm? Let's continue from there tomorrow. But if you have questions, I'm not running away.
I'm just not teaching something new today because you you have enough for one day too. So um, meditation. Yeah, go on. Yeah, Mr. Lee, can you please um, name this, uh, those these truths you call again? You said the scent, the scent, uh, the scent OX, Ubuntu, and Red Hot. Okay. Waters. Let's look at them. Okay. Let's look at them together. You can quickly google that if you want, but uh, they are all over the place. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Let's pretend you want to create a new machine. And then we say a Linux, Linux, we call Linux machine, Linux. All right, so we come to Linux, I will say Linux. Look at the different distro, at least the ones that uh, Oracle VM virtual board recognizes. There's Linux, there's Arch Linux, can you see it? Yes. Okay, Debian, these are the distros, some of the distros. Fedora, hmm? mm. Gen2, Mandriva, Oracle, yeah, Oracle Linux is a popular one. Red Hat, OpenSUSE, Turbo Linux, Ubuntu, Xandros, ETC. Okay, you so said right. they, they are distros. Right? Yeah, they are distributions, they are variants of Linux. Okay, can you still be uh, called versions of uh, no, let's use the, the, the industry what 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 everybody oh, calls. They are called okay. distros. Mm. Oh. They are called distros. Distros, okay. Yeah, and there are hundreds of them. Not all of them are popular because Linux is open source OS. So anybody can go to the core, to the program, the codes that run the program. Take the codes, the core codes, and then you can say, oh, I don't like this one. You modify it if you are a programmer. Modify it. Once you modify it, you have changed it from the original one. You cannot save it as the original one because you did not create the original one. You cannot save it as a new name and then call it a new name and call it uh, Francis uh, Linux. Then it becomes one. If everybody loves it, I mean, if you have enough people loving it and using it, then it becomes popular. So because it's open source and anybody, anybody can form a community, an Instagram community that say, guys, let us modify this Unix operating system to run the way we want so that we'll not have, let's collaborate and develop it so that we're able to use it for the new telecoms companies or the new kind of, uh, maybe something is raining that everybody is just interested. Mm -hmm. And then you say, Ubuntu is so hard to use for this. Why don't we modify Ubuntu specifically to suit this? And then people come up and say, oh, good idea. Ah, I love it. It's a good idea. I'll, I'll be part of it. They have 100, 200, 300 people working with you to modify codes here and there. Yeah, it becomes a new, a new distro, a new distribution. So that's how come we have many distributions. All right, so have you written this? Anyway, you still have access to this. You can take your time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just uh, uh, wrote some, some of them. Okay. All right. Good question. Any other question? So, so the notes. Yes, I will convert the notes and then send to you. Ah, uh, I still don't know the best way to send them. It will not be publicly. At this time, I'm going to send notes only to people who have paid. At this time, yes by email. So bear with me, sir, people have- sir, you don't have my email address. And please put it on the forum. From update your, your account details with your email. I have only for a few, only about six or seven of them. So put it on the forum. Or you can private message me if you don't want it on the forum. Then I'll copy it from there and put it where it should be. Okay, you do not have your email address. So if you have paid I've and you don't have your email. to you, but I've not received any email from you. So probably I'll send it again. Yes. Deliberately, the Windows was, uh, was just made uh, for us. 
But from then it, we are going to start being secretive. Mm -hmm. I know that one or two persons are waiting for us to begin to release the Linux video so that they can have it for free. No, no, it won't happen. Uh, and so when can we have this um, video? Usual, usual time. What's the usual time? Same day or next day? So it's going to be same. Same. Mm, same thing. Same thing. Uh, there are no more questions. I will not just take and waste your 15 minutes. I'll let you go ahead. What well, times are coming when even our three hours will not be enough. We'll be, we'll be eating into the three hours. If we're installing something and we're troubleshooting and it's not working, we'll not stop midway. We'll still remain in class until. So in Linux will be, but this one being the first class, let me not put too much on you. Even tomorrow, I might not put so much. But from subsequent classes after tomorrow, ah, there'll be work to do. Linux requires a lot of reasoning. It's not like Windows where it's already there, just click it. In Linux, it's not there. There's nothing to click. So you have to think it. You have to come up with, ah, how do I do it? What command do I use to navigate to get there? OK, I'm there now. How do I do this? So, so Linux requires thinking. Okay. So get ready. All right, all right, all right. So should I let you go now? All right. All right. So see you guys tomorrow then. Okay. See you tomorrow. Good night. All right. All right then. Good night, everyone.